for this talk. We want to motivate Lebesgue measure and the notion of measure zero. Now, if I take the real line, choose a closed subinterval AB, then the length of AB is B minus A. And if we assume the real line is a uniform density of one, then the mass of that interval is also B minus A. So, Lebesgue measure, it's going to be a generalization of length or mass for subsets of the real line that are not intervals. Now, why do we want this generalization? We can use this to generalize Riemann integration for functions where the Riemann integral fails. Now, first step, let's review how the Riemann integral works. So let's suppose I have f continuous on a closed interval a, b. Then we can define the definite integral from a to b of f with respect to x. So formally, this is just defined as a limit of Riemann sums. So Riemann sum, recall, we're going to take a, b, partition it into a bunch of subintervals. Then in each subinterval, we're going to choose a point. We apply f to get the height. And then the base is just given by the length of the subinterval. So we could take the area of each of these rectangles, take the sum of those areas, that gives us a Riemann sum, and then we're going to take the limit as the length of the bases go to zero. Now, with this condition here, this limit's always going to exist. And with this condition, all the choices here give us the same limit. Now, Let's consider a function f for which Riemann integration fails, but can be salvaged if we change our definitions. So I'll let f of x be equal to 1 on the rationals in the closed interval 0, 1, and 0 on the irrationals in the same interval. So the graph for a function just looks like two horizontal line segments. We'll have 0 on the irrationals, 1 on the rationals, and our eyesight is not fine enough to perceive the gaps. Now, if we want to form Riemann sums, if I'm always using an irrational point to determine my height, the heights are always zero. So instead of rectangles, we have segments, and our Riemann sum is equal to zero. On the other hand, if I always use a rational point to determine the height, we're always going to have height one, so the Riemann sum is going to be 1 times 1 is 1. And then we see that taking limits, we have 0 is not equal to 1, so the limit doesn't exist. That means okay, this function is not Riemann integrable. Now, if we think like an analyst, we're going to be able to fix that. So the two questions are, what should the correct answer be? And then how do you actually go about correcting it? And that's going to lead us to Lebesgue measure and the Lebesgue integral. Now, if we're thinking like analysts, we'll break our problem into two parts, a big part and a small part. The big part is an estimate for the quantity of interest. The small part will bound with an epsilon and then send epsilon to zero. In this case, the big part's going to be equal to zero, so we're only going to have a small part. Now, First, we do a prototype for the main problem. So the idea is there won't be a lot of content here, but it'll give us the picture we want to use in general. So I'm going to fix a natural number n greater than 3. I'll define a function f to be 0 on the interval from 0 to 1, except on the multiples of 1 over n, which is defined to be 1. We'll control the behavior of f with another function, f sub epsilon. This will be essentially the same function, except for each multiple of 1 over n. Okay, we'll take the interval okay, centered at that multiple with length epsilon. On that interval, we'll define f sub epsilon to be equal to 1. So here the graph is just going to look like, okay, at each multiple of 1 over n, we're going to have rectangles, height 1, thickness epsilon. So all we've done is taken the original function, just thickened around each multiple of 1 over n. Now, we have that 0 is less than or equal to f. It's less than or equal to f sub epsilon. These functions are Riemann integrable. So applying our inequalities rule, 
we have that zero is less than the integral over f, is less than or equal to the integral over f sub epsilon, and this we compute to be equal to sum of the areas of the rectangles, which is equal to n minus one epsilon. Now, if we let epsilon go to zero, okay, so that's just gonna be making these rectangles thinner and thinner, then this integral is gonna to go to zero. So that means our integral in the middle has to be equal to zero. That's not news. Okay, we know if I have a continuous function, okay, on a closed interval, if we have finitely many discontinuities, we'll get the same answer for the definite integral if we just forget about those points. So here I could have just taken definite integral of zero over the interval from zero to one and got my zero that way. For the original problem, we define an f sub epsilon also. Now, instead of using the multiples of one over n, we're gonna put an interval around each rational number in the closed interval from zero to one. Since this set is countably infinite, we can regard it as a sequence, a sub one, a sub two, a sub three, and so on. Now, we put each of our a's at the center of an interval. Here, the lengths won't be uniform. Instead, for a sub i, put that at the center of an interval of length e over two to the i. So for a1, it'll be an interval of length e over two, a2 of length e over four, a3 of length e over eight, and so on. Also note, the intervals here may overlap, so we're not worried about that. Now, for my f sub epsilon, We'll just define it to be one for any points that show up in any of these intervals, and then zero elsewhere. Now you might be wondering, okay, we have every rational number in this interval surrounded by an open interval. Shouldn't this cover the entire closed interval? The answer is gonna be no. Now, to get a feel for that, let's take a look at what we did before in this case. So I have that zero is less than or equal to f, it's less than or equal to f sub epsilon. That means, okay, if we think in terms of areas instead of Riemann integrals, zero is gonna be less than or equal to whatever we're calling the area under this function, less than or equal to, okay, the area under f sub epsilon. If we think in terms of rectangles, okay, well, the area for each of the rectangles we have going with these intervals, so it'd be one times epsilon over two to the i. Now they may overlap, so we'll have to use an inequality here, which is gonna give me, okay, the series summing over e over two to the i as i goes from one to infinity. Then if we sum this, that's gonna be equal to epsilon. Now, epsilon was arbitrary, so if we drive that down to zero, that's gonna say what we want to be this area under f should be equal to zero. Let's put a picture to our construction. So I'll take the closed interval from zero to one, mark off epsilon, take the interval from zero to epsilon, cut it in half. Now, take the interval from zero to epsilon over two, cut it in half, and keep repeating this process. So that's gonna generate a countably infinite collection of disjoint intervals if we take the sum of the lengths of those intervals, it's gonna be a geometric series whose sum is equal to epsilon. Now, if we start moving these intervals around, okay, well, the total sum of their lengths is always gonna be epsilon, so we're never gonna be able to cover this closed interval, which has length equal to one. In our construction, we know the rationals in the interval zero to one, is a countable set. So we could just enumerate as a1, a2, a3, and so on. So I'm just gonna take each of these intervals, move it around so that I cover a1, cover a2, cover a3, and so on. So our construction is gonna be such that we use each of these intervals to cover our rationals in this interval, but we don't cover the entire interval. Here we see a shortcoming of the Riemann integral. If we approximate using Riemann sums, the limit doesn't exist, 
And if we use a countably infinite number of rectangles, we can control the behavior at the rational numbers. And we see that the area under our function should be equal to zero. Now, if I take a Riemann integral function, change it at finitely many points, the integral is unchanged. In our case, we're taking the function zero on the closed interval zero, one. We're changing the value of the function to be equal to one at each rational number in the interval. So we're taking a Riemann integral function, changing its value a countably infinite number of points, and we see that the Riemann sum no longer exists. The problem here, we're using Riemann sums to approximate. So the idea is, with a Riemann sum, we're always using a finite number of rectangles to approximate the area. Now, we could let the intervals that correspond to the base get as small as we like, but it'll always be a finite number. The problem, I can't use a finite number of rectangles to get the behavior at the rationals under control. So we're going to need a replacement for using intervals as the base in our rectangle. That's where measurable sets are going to come in. So with a measurable set, we're going to have a lot of room to have holes and still be able to talk about, okay, not the length of the base anymore, but the measure of the base. We'll save measurable sets for the next video. For here, we'll return to the set of rational numbers with close interval 0, 1. Now, this set has the property of measure 0. So that means for all epsilon greater than 0, there's going to be a collection of open intervals such that the union of those intervals cover our set, and the sum of the lengths of those intervals is less than epsilon. So this means if I have a set of measure 0, then we can always find an open cover of our set such that the total length or mass of that set is as small as we like. Now, if we have a set that contains an open interval, that set cannot be measure 0. Okay, in this case, we won't be able to get epsilon below the length of that interval. On the other hand, if we have any countable subset of the real line, that set is measure zero. And we have another example in the Cantor set of measure zero. Here, the Cantor set is uncountable. Now, we've noted that the set of rational numbers in the closed interval zero, one, somewhat non-intuitive. We could find an open cover of our set that doesn't cover the closed interval 0, 1. Now think about that. We have the rational numbers in the interval. Okay, They're going to form a dense set. We're going to put an open interval around each of those points. Yet when we put all those intervals together, they don't cover the larger closed interval 0, 1. So there's room for a lot of points outside of those intervals. Now, let's consider the complement of one of these covers. So we have the measure, or the length, of our interval is equal to 1. So if we take one of these covers, remove it from our interval, then the measure of what's left over is going to be greater than or equal to 1 minus epsilon. So when I take away this cover, there are going to be a lot of points left. But think about this. When I throw this cover away, Okay, we're going to throw away all the rational numbers. So that means what's left over has no intervals in it. It's even weirder than that. Not only am I going to throw rational numbers away, but there's going to be a little bit of area around each rational number that we throw away with it. So we can throw all that stuff away, and we're still left with a set that has measure very close to our original set. 